Hey everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. Have another Here journal for you. Leviticus chapter 14, after the exodus from Egypt. The Here to See channel focused on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the difficult, and instructions for a better life. We're reading through the entire book of Leviticus, a chapter at a time, doing a Here journal video on each chapter. Here journaling is a method that is edifying to your personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Check out replicate.org to learn more about here journaling. But now let's read and listen to Leviticus chapter 14 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Then I'll share my here journal with you. Chapter 14 Cleansing from Skin Diseases And the Lord said to Moses, The following instructions are for those seeking ceremonial purification from a skin disease. Those who have been healed must be brought to the priest, who will examine them at a place outside the camp. If the priest finds that someone has been healed of a serious skin disease, he will perform a purification ceremony using two live birds that are ceremonially clean, a stick of cedar, some scarlet yarn, and a hyssop branch. The priest will order that one bird be slaughtered over a clay pot filled with fresh water. He will take the live bird, the cedar stick, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop branch, and dip them into the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the fresh water. The priest will then sprinkle the blood of the dead bird seven times on the person being purified of the skin disease. When the priest has purified the person, he will release the live bird in the open field to fly away. The persons being purified must then wash their clothes, shave off all their hair, and bathe themselves in water. Then they will be ceremonially clean and may return to the camp. However, they must remain outside their tents for seven days. On the seventh day, they must again shave all the hair from their heads, including the hair of the beard and eyebrows. They must also wash their clothes and bathe themselves in water. Then they will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, each person being purified must bring two male lambs and a one-year-old female lamb, all with no defects, along with a grain offering of six quarts of choice flour moistened with olive oil and a cup of olive oil. Then the officiating priest will present that person for purification, along with the offerings, before the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will take one of the male lambs and the olive oil and present them as a guilt offering, lifting them up as a special offering before the Lord. He will then slaughter the male lamb in the sacred area where sin offerings and burnt offerings are slaughtered. As with the sin offering, the guilt offering belongs to the priest. It is a most holy offering. The priest will then take some of the blood of the guilt offering and apply it to the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. Then the priest will pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil in his palm and sprinkle some of it with his finger seven times before the Lord. The priest will then apply some of the oil in his palm over the blood from the guilt offering that is on the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. The priest will apply the oil remaining in his hand to the head of the person being purified. Through this process, the priest will purify the person before the Lord. Then the priest must present the sin offering to purify the person who was cured of the skin disease. After that, the priest will slaughter the burnt offering and offer it on the altar along with the grain offering. Through this process, the priest will purify the person who was healed, and the person will be ceremonially clean. But anyone who is too poor and cannot afford these offerings may bring one male lamb for a guilt offering to be lifted up as a special offering for purification. The person must also bring two quarts of choice flour moistened with olive oil for the grain offering and a cup of olive oil. The offering must also include two turtle doves or two young pigeons, whichever the person can afford. One of the pair must be used for the sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. 
On the eighth day of the purification ceremony, the person being purified must bring the offerings to the priest in the Lord's presence at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will take the lamb for the guilt offering, along with the olive oil, and lift them up as a special offering to the Lord. Then the priest will slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering. He will take some of its blood and apply it to the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. The priest will also pour some of the olive oil into the palm of his own left hand. He will dip his right finger into the oil in his palm and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord. The priest will then apply some of the oil in his palm over the blood from the guilt offering that is on the lobe of the right ear, the thumb of the right hand, and the big toe of the right foot of the person being purified. The priest will apply the oil remaining in his hand to the head of the person being purified. Through this process, the priest will purify the person before the Lord. Then the priest will offer the two turtle doves, or the two young pigeons, whichever the person can afford. One of them is for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, to be presented along with the grain offering. Through this process, the priest will purify the person before the Lord. These are the instructions for purification for those who have recovered from a serious skin disease, but who cannot afford to bring the offerings normally required for the ceremony of purification. Treatment of Contaminated Houses Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When you arrive in Canaan, the land I am giving you as your own possession, I may contaminate some of the houses in your land with mildew. The owner of such a house must then go to the priest and say, It appears that my house has some kind of mildew. Before the priest goes in to inspect the house, he must have the house emptied so nothing inside will be pronounced ceremonially unclean. Then the priest will go in and examine the mildew on the walls. If he finds greenish or reddish streaks and the contamination appears to go deeper than the wall's surface, the priest will step outside the door and put the house in quarantine for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must return for another inspection. If he finds that the mildew on the walls of the house has spread, the priest must order that the stones from those areas be removed. The contaminated material will then be taken outside the town to an area designated as ceremonially unclean. Next, the inside walls of the entire house must be scraped thoroughly and the scrapings dumped in the unclean place outside the town. Other stones will be brought in to replace the ones that were removed, and the walls will be replastered. But if the mildew reappears after all the stones have been replaced, and the house has been scraped and replastered, the priest must return and inspect the house again. If he finds that the mildew has spread, the walls are clearly contaminated with a serious mildew, and the house is defiled. It must be torn down, and all its stones, timbers, and plaster must be carried out of town to the place designated as ceremonially unclean. Those who enter the house during the period of quarantine will be ceremonially unclean until evening, and all who sleep or eat in the house must wash their clothing. But if the priest returns for his inspection and finds that the mildew has not reappeared in the house after the fresh plastering, he will pronounce it clean because the mildew is clearly gone. To purify the house, the priest must take two birds, a stick of cedar, some scarlet yarn, and a hyssop branch. He will slaughter one of the birds over a clay pot filled with fresh water. He will take the cedar stick, the hyssop branch, the scarlet yarn, and the live bird, and dip them into the blood of the slaughtered bird and into the fresh water. Then he will sprinkle the house seven times. When the priest has purified the house in exactly this way, he will release the live bird in the open fields outside the town. Through this process, the priest will purify the house, and it will be ceremonially clean. These are the instructions for dealing with serious skin diseases, including scabby sores, and mildew, whether on clothing or in a house, and a swelling on the skin, a rash, or discolored skin. This procedure will determine whether a person or object is ceremonially clean or unclean. These are the instructions regarding skin diseases and mildew. And that was Leviticus chapter 14 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Now for my hear journal. First the highlight. 
Leviticus chapter 14, verses 54 to 57. Verse 54. These are the instructions for dealing with serious skin diseases, including scabby sores, mildew, whether on clothing or in a house, and a swelling on the skin, a rash, a discolored skin. This procedure will determine whether a person or object is ceremonially clean or unclean. These are the instructions regarding skin diseases and mildew. So, what's my explanation? God provided instructions to Moses concerning skin diseases and mildew in a house or clothing. These instructions for purifying houses seem to effectively remove mildew with a rigorous inspection process by the priests. So, what's my application or the application for us today? We can apply the same concept ourselves by spiritually cleansing our own lives, including our body, the temple of Jesus Christ, and also our homes to be free of contaminations, both physical and spiritual. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 10.22 Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Acts 22.16 And now, why do you wait? Rinse and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on His name. 1 Corinthians 12.13 For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free and all were made to drink of one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.11 And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. John 3.5 Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one was born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. And I will speak, sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness, and from your idols I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh, and I give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and carefully obey my rules. 1 John 1, 7 But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have a fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. Psalm 51:10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Matthew 12, 44. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds my house empty, swept, and put in order. So, what's my response? Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Help me, Lord, to keep my mind, body, soul, and home clean and righteous in you. Help me, Lord, to follow you correctly, to avoid circumstances or people that would lead me or my family members astray. I pray for those that do not know you, Lord. May they find you. 
And now how about you? Why don't you try some hair journaling? Highlight, explain, apply, respond. You'll be glad you did. Comment below. Come on, share your experiences with us. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If not, read the Gospel of John chapter 3 to learn about His forgiveness and talk to God about it. You can always talk to God. He's waiting on you. Seek Him now. God bless. Thank you.